<clears throat> Good morning, boys and girls. We are going to talk today about maps and globes. So I'm going to get ready to share with you about maps and globes. So let's take a look first at, <laughs> hang on just one second. Let's take a look first and we're going to read um, all about maps. Today, our goal is to identify and talk about maps and globes. So say, I can identify and tell about maps and globes. All right, so we're gonna read this book today all about maps. And you know what? We're gonna find out about different kinds of maps as we continue on in this learning. Today's maps are gonna talk about things in the world. And so um, let's get going. Hi there, I am Kendall. I am just checking this map to find my friend's house. Have you used a map before? You can use a map to figure out how to get somewhere or to find out where something is. Did you guys see that bold word right there? Remember, a map is a picture of an area used to locate places. So it helps us figure out how to get somewhere or where something is. Maps have a lot of different symbols on them. Since each map is a little different, they have a map key. The map key will tell you what each symbol means. Usually the blue areas are, wa are water and white or green areas are land. Can you guess what all the lines are on this map? Did you guess all the highways and roads in, our, um, in America? You would be correct. Did you see this bold word up here? Remember bold words tell us important information. So this word is symbols. And we wanna learn that a symbol is a picture that is used to represent something. So all of these lines are symbols that show us the roads and the highways. A lot of maps also have a compass rose on them. These help you figure out how to hold the map and which direction to go in real life. There's that bold word compass. And the, a compass is a tool to help you show or find direction. Do so you see where it talks about the north, the south, the east, and the west? It can help us figure out which way to go. Look at what we notice on this page. This is called a globe. Sometimes you need more than a map to help you. A globe can also help you find a place. A globe is shaped just like the earth, so it is easier to understand where the continents are. So if we look at this, then that bold word right there tells us that this is a globe. A globe is a sphere on which a map of the earth is displayed. And on it, you can see the large land masses that we call continents. And then you can see the blue is the ocean and the um, waters around them, the oceans and the water around them. Let's keep going. I need to tell my dad how to get to my friend's house. I hope that you can find a few places on the map. See you later. So boys and girls, I hope that if you've never used a map or a globe, maybe you can practice with that today. We're gonna watch a video about maps and globes called Know Your Globe. So let's take a look. Do you have one of these? Maybe at home or at school. It's a globe, a model of the whole earth, small enough to fit right on your desk. Think of it as a map that's in the shape of a ball. By getting to know your globe, you can get to know all of the land masses and bodies of water that cover our planet and what their names are. So let's take a pretend trip around the world. All of the blue on the globe, that's where there's water. And all the other colored parts, that's land. As you can see, Earth is mostly covered in water with large land masses here and there. In fact, there are seven different land masses on the Earth, and these chunks of land are called continents. This piece here is called North America. It's one of the seven continents. The one below it is another continent called South America. On this side of the globe, we have some other continents. This chunk here is Africa, and up here is Europe. And next to it is Asia, our largest continent. Down here by itself is Australia, our smallest continent. 
And at the very bottom of the globe, and at the bottom of our planet, is the seventh continent, Antarctica. Most of our seven continents are divided into smaller pieces of land, called countries. That's what all these different colors are within the bigger chunks of land. Like in North America, but Australia and Antarctica are continents that aren't broken up into smaller countries. The other five continents have almost 200 countries on them. That's a lot of land. But what's all the water on the globe? If you think there's a lot of land on Earth, just wait until you hear this. More than half of our world is covered in water. Ahem. Oh, hi, Webb, and hi, Bill. What are you guys up to? Well, Jesse, we heard you were going to be talking about water, and who better to help you than a couple of ducks who, I don't know, live in it? Good point. And actually, more than 70% of the world is covered in water. You're right. Isn't that cool? Some of it's fresh water, like what you find in lakes and rivers, where we hang out. Uh, -huh. and by far, most of it's salt water, like what fills the oceans. And our planet is covered in five main, very big oceans. Exactly. And can you name the five oceans? Uh, of course we can. First, there's the Pacific Ocean, over there between Asia and the Americas. It's the largest ocean in the world. It covers almost 30% of the planet. It's so big, all seven continents could fit over it with room to spare. Whoa! But that's not all. On the other side of the Americas is the Atlantic Ocean, the planet's second largest ocean. The next biggest ocean is the Indian Ocean, below Asia and in between Africa and Australia. You're right! And another major ocean is up here at the top of the world, where there's no land, just water. This is the Arctic Ocean. The Arctic Ocean doesn't look much like the others in real life. That's because most of the time, it's covered in ice. Brr. And there's just one more ocean we should mention. I know, I know, the Southern Ocean. That's right. The Southern Ocean is the name for the waters that surround all of Antarctica at the southern end of the Earth. I'm just going to come out and say that that's too cold for me. Me too. We're not penguins. Now we know our globe, or at least the basics of it. The fact is, there are thousands of cities and lakes and rivers on the globe that we didn't talk about. And all of this different stuff is what makes our Earth so different and interesting as you travel from one place to the next. So, do you know what part of the globe you live on? Are you in Australia or Europe? or here in North America like us? Let us know, and if you have a question for any of us about our amazing world's weather or animals or plants or anything else, leave a comment below or send us an email at kidsatthescishow.com. We'll see you next time. Bye. Awesome job, boys and girls. Great job listening. I just have one more thing to show you for this lesson. You could do this activity in the next day or two. The choice is yours, but I have sent in your packet um, an opportunity for you to learn to label and color a map and a globe. So you would cut out these pieces of um, these words. So this says land, a map, and water. And you would put them where they go and then you would color the water blue and the land green. And then the same thing on a globe. So um, you would read land, globe, and water, and you would label them on this globe and color the water blue and the land green. Boys and girls, you got learned a lot of information today about maps and globes, and we will continue this learning on in just the next few weeks. I'm super excited to learn this with you because it's so fun to learn about our world and how to find um, and get somewhere, right? All right. Well, thank you for um, joining me today for this lesson. And if you have any questions or anything, just let me know. Have a great day.